Hi, my name is Cole Lorenzen. And I'm Devin Gall. And today we're going to talk about exact emerge meter adjustments and settings. So first thing we're going to look at here when we open up the exact emerge meter. So these are going to be a bowl shape rather than the discs. First thing you want to check when you open it uh, is the seal. So when you first get to going, you want to make sure the seal, I mean, it's not cracked or it's not brittle. So you actually get a proper seal. If it is your first year running it, you're going to want to make sure that you got your knockout wheel in place. When they come new from the factory, they are not installed already. So this over here. So when we move on to the bowl, so the first thing, so one of the things you're going to notice is instead of the plates, it is going to have this bowl shape. That is so when you get into like the terrain, it has a better time picking up the seeds. So one of the things you want to look at when you got these bowls, so if you're in corn, if you notice, uh, every other hole is punched out. So there's going to be 32 total holes running around the disc or the bowl. When you're in beans, it's actually going to be every hole. So it goes to a total of 64. So we'll set this aside here. So one of the things you're going to want to watch with these bowls is so around here we have weather strips. You're going to want to make sure those aren't wear down too much because as soon as they get worn down and you start making contact on the frame, it's actually going to start eating into the bowl. So that's one thing to check. Uh, when it comes to the bowl itself, Right here, we got uh, the clamp to actually lock it into place. Um, what you're gonna wanna watch out for here, we can show it right here if you snap it in. So when these bowls are in place tight, you're gonna want about a uh, half quarter turn to half a turn. So you don't want them free spinning. You don't want them to stop right away. If they are too tight or too loose, what you're gonna wanna do is if you pop the pin, actually there's a, Back here on the back side, there's a little knob. If you hold it, you can pull out the pin, screw it in, or screw it out to actually adjust that itself. When it comes to the actual operation side, some of the different settings that you're going to want to make sure. So if you're running corn, you're actually going to have a green disc with an agit that uh, with bumps on it just to agitate the seed. Whereas if you're in uh, beans, it's going to be a yellow smooth. Uh, to pop those out, there's actually three clamps here on the back side. You're going to want to push and just push it out and they'll pop over. Um, up here, you're going to have your actual double eliminator. So one thing to make sure a good starting point is if you're in corn, you're going to want to keep it on that middle point. Whereas if you're in beans, you want to back it all the way down. So that is just a starting point. If you're having, I mean, singulation issues, I mean, obviously you want to mess with the vacuum, everything like that. But this is another place you can come and start. Maybe back that off or push it in. Uh, so initially how this is going to work is so when you when the seed comes in this agitator is going to agitate the corner It's going to move around the beans where it's going to get placed into the actual slots on your bowl itself And as this turns up the double eliminator is going to knock off any doubles and place it in your knockout wheel That we talked about is going to place it right into the brush. So moving on uh, to the uh, other portions of the exact emerge uh, row unit and meter uh, If you take the meter off this row unit has this meter uh, removed from it. So as you can see we have a row unit controller. This is going to be on every row. Uh, this monitors everything from uh, seed spacing, population, ride quality, uh, your downforce, whatever you have on there. This one has hydraulic downforce on there. And then you can also see that this meter has uh, two motors to drive the meter and the belt. This top one is going to drive your meter and this one will drive your belt, allowing us for infinite populations and speeds uh, to be achieved. So. Um, some things to watch for every once in a while uh, these motors may start to get some wear on them they might get a little jerky in their operation uh, so if you suspect that I'd recommend doing like a row unit runoff and uh, uh, try to diagnose uh, if one of these are, are going bad uh, diving a little farther into it um, this this is your brush belt cartridge and kind of really what um, makes the exact emerge uh, set stand aside from anything else on the market. Uh, so what this does is, as Cole mentioned, it pops the seed into here, into this brush in the center, and then carries it past this, the seed sensor all the way down and kicks it out to a dead drop in the bottom of the seed trench. So some things on this cartridge is we've got our tensioner. There's this knob on the back to tighten the brush. So right now we've got a the brush is tight. Um, what you're going to want to do at the end of the year is remove the tension off of this and we recommend to go ahead and pull the brushes out at that point in time and uh, you know um, set them somewhere where they're not going to be damaged. Uh, these brushes will last for a lot of acres. What you want to make sure of is that as you're storing them there's nothing pushing against these brushes 
and that's going to deform it. Um, a lot of times it'll come out of it. This is your brush conditioner down here, and as you run, it'll kind of pull it out of it. But a lot of times if you get that, uh, you might miss a seed placement, and so you might start getting some skips, and you may have to look at uh, replacing your brush. Some other things on this cartridge that you'll see is down here we've got a bearing. If you get a lot of acres under this, these bearings will go out. Um, so go ahead when you have the brush pulled out, just give that bearing a spin. Make sure it's not um, grinding or anything like that and that it, it has some, some good free spinning motion. The other thing is this top. We've got the gearbox. This fits right into this drive motor. And as you spin that, uh, you're going to want to make sure that there's no excessive play uh, side to side, up and down, as, and as you spin it. Same thing, you're probably going to want to spin this bearing on this back side and make sure that that one's good as well. Some other things you can see in here, we've got our seed sensor. So you can just pop that out. Um, these are very accurate sensors. Sometimes if you're getting any inaccuracies, um, you might see, um, for instance, in some uh, straw st stubble situations, it might bring straw back around and count that. So uh, and it'll get this lens dirty. So it's important to make sure that these lenses are all clean. Uh, there's also this wear strip all the way down around here where the seed rides against. Um, I've seen planters with a lot of acres uh, not have these worn out. Probably not a huge wear item, but you can just pop those out and replace those. The next thing on here is our brush conditioner. Um, this is just this wire that comes out at the end, kind of fluffs, fluffs up the brush a little bit as you're uh, going. Uh, if you get into any muddy situations, it does help uh, to condition that brush and get some of the dirt and mud off of there. Uh, I will caution if it gets too muddy or if you have fertilizer squirting into there, you're going to plug these up. So these are not a save-all um, solution here. Uh, these do wear out. Some It'll wear a flat spot in this. Uh, you just pop these out. Um, pretty easy to replace over time, so uh, you'll want to want to uh, check those over from time to time. Moving on to some other portions of the real unit, uh, you can see we've got our gauge wheels here. If you want to come around, you can see these are the spoke gauge wheels. These are an option on all the retrofits and and new planters. Um, makes it easy for cleaning out mud if you are going to be running any tougher conditions. As you're checking these over, you just want to make sure that this lip is good and intact and there's not any chunks missing out of it. As you're running with it on the ground, you do want this to make slight contact with the true Vs. So moving on to the true Vs, uh, you're going to want to check those, make sure that the bezel is still good and intact and um, that they measure correctly. Uh, as you're setting your true Vs at the beginning of the year, we've got the business cards in here if you wedge those in between the two true v's you're going to want to make sure that there is an inch and a half to two inches in there if there's not you're going to have to pull the gauge wheels off and take the true v's off and there's shims you can either add or remove shims as necessary to to get that proper placement and if you have any questions on anything we cover today uh get a hold of your local landmark dealership and we would be happy to help you out